we try, um, starting from the opening verses. And Mattia also suggested that we try to recite the verses together. It's possible. Okay, it seems we have a Santa telephone meter. Uh, you can use, uh, we, were, uh, we have um, two editions that were sent out. One is the original edition, the first edition published in modern times by a rather great scholar, Hendrik Kier, a Dutch scholar, to whom I feel some, some allegiance since uh, some of my studies of Sanskrit began in Holland, with some kind of parapara which goes back to Kier. Rather great scholar, I think. And it's set very beautifully in that way. But I have to say that the readings are in some places to be corrected. And the other edition, which is in a not so beautiful uh, Roman uh, bold face type, has better readings in several places. So if you prefer, you can look mainly at that. This edition was published 10 years ago now, 2005, by Albrecht Hanisch, a German scholar whom some of you know personally. Shri Manti Sat Kuna Parikraha Mangalani Manti Sat Kuna Parikraha Mangalani Kirtyaspadanyana Vagita Manoharani Kirtyaspadanyana Vagita Manoharani Purve Shujan Masumunesh Charita Bhutani Purve Shujan Masumunesh Charita Bhutani Bhatya Svakavya Kusumanjali Narchayishye Bhatya Svakavya Kusumanjali Narchayishye Okay, this uh, text is linguistically more difficult than Ravnakara on the whole, I think. Indeed, I find Arya Shura somehow a difficult writer. Simple, but difficult. <laughs> the interpretation of some expressions, okay, they could be interpreted in various ways. We try some more. Of course, as you know, this text has been rather often studied. There are many translations of it. I can think of at the moment in English, maybe, well, at least three translations come to mind. An old one by Speyer, another Dutch scholar, a very great Dutch scholar, really. Uh, more recently, a very readable translation by Peter Korosh. And Justin Milan has also translated it rather recently. So at least three in English. Then uh, Professor Gnoli has translated the work into Italian and others. There are definitely several other modern translations. So uh, people can read the work in translations, but since it is Kavyam, we have to read it in the original Sanskrit, really, because we cannot avoid it. And uh, without having studied the translations for lack of time, I just try to give you a rough translation in small. So the main sentence is, Charita Putani. <clears throat> I will worship the Charita Bhutani. The compound Charita Bhutan is a certain ambiguity in it. I think the commentator might have mentioned two different interpretations. Right now I forget exactly. That. So we could take it as the wonders, the Abhutas, the miraculous things or wonders, which are the deeds, Charita, the action or the deeds. This is a nice interpretation, please. Of whom? Munehi, of the sage, that is to say, of the Buddha. I worship these beings, this, these wondrous beings, to translate it a little bit freely. If I say wondrous beings and I made a Buddha an adjective to Charita, probably the Sanskrit does not really function that way, but okay, more or less it means this. I worship these wondrous beings. How? Or with what? Saka vya kusumanjali na. With a kusumanjali, a handful of flowers. But the flowers here are Svakavya, my, of my own poetry. Okay. The idea is that the porch, instead of worshipping with real flowers, this is a worship with a handful of flowers of verses, flowers that are verses. How, further? Bhaktya, with devotion. I offer this with devotion. Now the Charita Bhutani are Purveshu Janmasu. In former deeds, uh, in former lives. Of course, also in his uh, last life, as Siddhartha, uh, the Buddha also had Charita Bhutani. But those are not the subject here. Here the subject are the Charita Bhutani in former births, Purve Shudamasi. The Charita Bhutani are described by some adjectives. Shri Manti, they are glorious. 
and he put this word no doubt deliberately at the beginning so that the first word of the whole composition is Shri or Shri Manti, but okay, Shri Manti contains Shri. We start with this auspicious word, Shri. They are glorious. The commentator says something about uh, Shri here being maybe a Swarta Sampat and Parakya Sampat, okay, which from the Mahayana perspective, the Buddha has this is always to be stressed. Parakya Sampati or Sampat and Swarta Sampat. <coughs> Perfection of complete fulfillment of own goal and of others' goals, the goals of others, the aims of others. Srimanti, glorious, Satguna Parikraha Mangala, auspicious Mangala, the deeds of the Buddha are auspicious. Satguna Parikraha, maybe because of the taking, Parikraha is the way in which he made his own Satgunas, excellent virtues. So here too there are some ambiguities in how the compound could be resolved. I have uh, in mind one in the commentary. There might have been others which I forget at the moment. The commentator says that satguna we could take in either of two ways as satam gunaha, the gunas of excellent people, sats, or we could take it as a karmadaya, excellent gunas. Okay, it doesn't make too much difference really. These deeds are for the kirtya spadani, locus loki of fame. Cause, perhaps we could say, a little bit free for us, but I'm here. So they are glorious, they are the basis of or the cause of the Buddha's fame. Anavagita Manoharani, this is an interesting one. They are uh, anavagita, not blamed, something like that, not reprehensible, and lovely, captivating, mind captivating. The commentary says something about, um, okay, there are other things which are anavagita, but which are not so manohara, <laughs> which are excellent, blameless, but not necessarily captivating. But here we are talking about the Buddha's wonderful uh, previous actions, Charita, Bhutani, Bhutve, Shujanmasu, which are both anavagita and manohara, captivating. So those deeds I worship by writing this poem. Okay, is it somehow clear? Uh, I don't remember. There are a lot of interesting things in the commentary, but most of them I have forgotten at the moment. Maybe, Matia, if there's something especially interesting, you can remind us of that sometime. For instance, here yeah, now at the beginning, he says something about Arya Shura, which is also interesting. He says that he was uh, uh, the son of a southern king. And uh, I don't remember now. Ah, oh, we have it here. This is your class. Yes, Kramat Agatam Apirajan Parityacha. So it was time for him to become the king instead of his father, but he abandoned the kingship, Rajam, although it had come to him in the, the hereditary lineage, and Prarajitaha. He went forth and was Bodhimarga Prastitaha. Okay. And now it says Pratama Bhumistitaha. He was in the first Bhumi, the Bodhisattva Bhumis. And then he wrote this work, Jatakama of Jakara. Okay, it, he wrote this Samadhi of Yuttama of Asaya. Okay, in, when he was not actually in Samadhi, in the state of Yuttama, the arising from Samadhi. Okay, when he was walking around, doing a kind of walking meditation, if you wish. Something like this. And then something a little bit odd. It seems to say that he, he made the Jataka to be. Tamana Patresha Kantaka Likitakshara. It seems to mean that he wrote it down, at least that much is more or less certain. He made it one whose aksharas, this is a Bhagavrigi compound, were scratched or written, Likita, by a thorn, Kantaka, a thorn like uh, stylus, maybe, could be also a real thorn, indeed, used as a stylus, on Tamala leaves, but perhaps it should be Tala Patresha on palm leaves. This would be these references to tamala leaves being used for writing, I cannot recall, but maybe there are some, it may be possible. Tamala leaves, the tamala tree, I don't know what its the scientific name is. It is very dark. This is the one association I have with it. <laughs> In Sanskrit poetry, it is always described as being very dark. 
But the scratching is what we normally do on palm leaves, at least in the southern part, for instance, of India or in South Asia. It's possible that it should be Tala Patresha. Okay, this is interesting. And then there are some, it becomes a little bit difficult also, the commentary. It starts to discuss also the, uh, the, the, the genre and quote some definitions of um, poetry and so forth. Okay, maybe as I say, if there are some special points, you can always try to remind us of them. Okay, if you like, we try the second verse. <laughs> 